Okay, uh, we're at the Q&A portion. You ready, Monty? Yeah. Ready. Okay. We've heard a lot about affordable housing and the news about this development, but not much about workforce housing. Can you give us more information and how many units there will be? Is this working? Okay. Uh, first question is affordable housing. Okay. Um, Workforce housing is something that we, uh, uh, I've been hearing a good bit of over the last, uh, I guess, four or five months. Uh, workforce housing, I am familiar with, we actually have a project in Bethesda, Maryland that has a workforce housing component in it, and basically it would be for individuals making between 80% 80 and 80 AMI and 100% AMI, and the thinking being that, uh, well, one could think of it, we have affordable housing currently and we have unaffordable housing. Uh, so this would be sort of the middle bandwidth. Um, currently, there is no provisions for that. Uh, there's been a lot of, uh, I think, really good suggestions. It might be something that we propose to uh, Councilmember Wells or uh, uh, the mayor's staff and uh, uh, see if, there's, if it resonates and it's something that uh, is desirable. Can you let the audience know how many slips will be set aside for the close-knit community of people who live on their boats at Gangplank? Um, the, uh, the, the, we think the live aboard element, and I mentioned this the other day, although I wasn't specific, uh, is always going to be an essential element to the waterfront. Uh, and so there has been a lot of questions in the last month uh, about the amount of live aboard element. The actual amount, uh, we're, we're not sure of at this time, uh, to give comfort uh, to live aboards, we don't intend to reduce the live aboards uh, that are there today. Um, how many more, if, if any more, we're not sure of. We do think that that element is important. We don't want the waterfront to be some pristine environment just filled with upscale yachts. We, 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 want, we do want upscale yachts. Uh, we do want transient boats. Uh, we do want recreational boats, but we also want liveaboards. We think that's an important part of the community. Can you explain the building heights again? I'm concerned about such tall buildings blocking all of our views. Um, I'm going to give this one a stand. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the afford. Well, thanks. Um, the key thing to the building heights is uh, that we position taller buildings where they do not impact the views down existing streets and corridors first. We're trying to make buildings taller so we don't cover as much land. We'd rather put a couple more stories on instead of 110, 130. And in so doing, we can get the open spaces we're talking about. We can get all the view corridors and all the access areas from Maine through that we could not achieve if we spread the bulk out over more land. We also believe that we should not look and feel like tall buildings are coming down on the public spaces. So we're, if you look at the model, we've, the model's hard to read, it's early, rough, but we've introduced walls that go up to three, four, five stories, and then there's a setback. And that automatically makes the buildings feel lower while we're still getting the mass behind. Also, the most critical corners, like on the parks or on the city pier, they're always, as you see in the model, they're always trying to make buildings smaller, one and two stories, so that at the edges, which is what you see the most of the buildings, and corners, you always see the smaller parts. But the key reason for the taller buildings is really that we are not blocking any more views, we're getting a lot more public space, and more important is we're getting a porous waterfront from Maine where we have many more view corridors and many more access points. I think there's like a dozen view corridors that have been created with this approach. And other places like um, at the M Street Landing, there the, the street walls around the whole public space are only one story high because we were able to transfer bulk to the one taller building. And in that case, that building is shaped a little bit more to let the view be softer around the taller part. And if you look carefully at all the model pieces, you'll see the buildings are always going up and down along the wharf. There are no real tall building walls. Everything, especially along the wharf, the public place, the buildings that are tall are always perpendicular or there's edges that are cut off so that you never feel a long building wall. It's not just height, it's how long and massive the buildings are. Heights can actually be made to feel like there's much less mass 
if done appropriately around the public spaces. It's a long-winded answer, I'm sorry. But we think we're getting a lot of public benefits. Hey Ben, hey Ben. I just want to add to something that uh, related to Stan, Stan's response, and that is these blocks, we, we, we coined them mini blocks, they're only approximately 250 feet long before you not only have view corridors, but you have access uh, to the waterfront. A typical block on K Street would be 400 feet, and four to 600 feet as a comparison. Okay. Would there be a space for farmer's market? Well, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, do you want to? The answer is yes. Uh, as we talked about Market Square all the way to the uh, west of the project. Yeah, there it is right there. Uh, what we imagine is a green market in a couple of buildings that will be there year round, as well as a seasonal market where we can work to bring in, uh, bring in farmers, bring in other, uh, other purveyors who, um, who can be part of a recurring seasonal market when the weather permits. So, yes. We, um, we do have to wrap up. I think we got more questions than we got uh, audience. In fact, I mean, there's a pack like that. And what we're going to do is to respond to all of the questions, and we will post the responses on our website. And that's www.swdcwaterfront.com. Did you all get that? It's on the handout? OK, great. But I'll say it again, www.swdcwaterfront.com. And I think, how many more questions do we have? Maybe 100? I mean, huge, huge number. And we just, Arena Stage has been so generous with its space. And we just can't um, keep going this, with this too long. And um, we really appreciate you all coming tonight. So I want to thank you all for coming and for your participation, asking such terrific questions. And thanks to the dignitaries, council member, and others who joined us this evening. Thanks to our development team members, both those of, of us who spoke up here and also many other development team um, members are in the audience helping, working, um, answering questions at the tables. And particular thanks to Edward Doby, Desiree Urquhart, and uh, Marina Stage at the Mead Center for American Theater for hosting us tonight. Thank you so much, and please stay in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you.